Hello everyone, welcome back to an episode of my Minecraft Let's Play. As always, this is Martin. We're in the cave today. As I said last week, we're going to start working on the farm mechanisms. Uh, a couple of weeks back I mentioned I wanted to turn this into a giant wheat farm. That was a mistake, I didn't mean to say wheat farm, because we've got our wheat farm down there. We don't need a wheat farm at any rate, because we can just churn wheat out of our trusty wheat maker. So, this is actually going to be a sugarcane farm, and I've run up a few single units in creative just to test the concept, and as far as I know it works. So we're going to start getting together our material we're going to need. You can see here we've got lots of pistons from just general exposure to the slime farm. Lots of slimes spawning around us. So I've got lots of stuff. We need our glowstone. Uh, we need some other building materials. I think we're going to use stone brick for this one. It's eight of those. Let's quickly ch change it down. You can see the giant cavern there on my right down here. This is all just carved out. It was obviously just a continuation of that wall up until about there. So I've cut it out. I've also gone up top here and marked out more ground to remove. If I can jump up here without falling off. So that's that's going to be the length of one unit and all these units are going to be banked up next to each other in rows and I aim to fill this entire chamber with banks of sugarcane farms on both sides which means we're going to have a ton of sugarcane which is brilliant because we need lots of emeralds because emeralds get us stuff primarily redstone because I'm having a hard time keeping the supply up we're almost running out at the moment uh, I need to go mining at some point. Now what was I about to do? Dirt, that's what we need. Just a bit of dirt. That should be enough. Now, what I've got here is a test run here. This is 19 dirt blocks in a row and then we have our nether brick at the end which we're going to use for our sort of capping stones because it looks quite nice with the the bright colour from the sh sugar cane. So that's going to go up like that. And it's raining outside. Very nice. Let's jump across there. And then just drop down. So anyway, this is going to be sort of a building episode for these uh, units. I'm just going to quickly start building one now. Like so. Quick. Nope. Oh, blimey. That's. Ah, we've lost our feather falling boots. Right. What was I looking for? Um, ladders. So each of these units is going to be back to back. So I've got two here. The redstone conduit will go up the middle and that will power both sides which will push push outwards so there will be another one uh, let's see spacing wise there will be another one a three gap here and then another one and then there will be water streams at the bottom here pushing it all into this central channel and this will wash all to a central point where we can collect it so basically the entire thing will be automated at a push of a button we can Set up, set off the entire system. Uh, we need stone brick there. Actually, since that's the end cap stone, we don't need that in our venture either. And actually, we don't need those. We need that. We're going to need water. So let's quickly make a infinite spring. Right, so we need our end stone to cap off there. Uh, I think we might as well just cut out, cut out this channel here, just so that if we need to come in from below and we find this, we don't accidentally flood ourselves. So that gets 
cap it off there. Stone brick. Now do I or do I not put that stone there? See this is going to be the edge. I sort of want to create a sort of a border theme with this uh, nether brick. So I don't think it's necessary to waste it all. There'll be a cover plate here. So I've done. Also the process of cutting out this little cavern here has almost used up the pickaxe so we're going to need to go and get another one which is fortunate because we are now level 30 and that's purely from killing slimes and mining uh, coal and iron or smelting the iron from around this little cavern dug out. So that goes up to there and that joins up that end like so. Let's get our water sources. The good thing about water, doing water like this is you can just grab the source block from the one behind you which you just took. So for example those are all generating source blocks now. So i place one there. Odd. Yeah, that's right. Basically you don't need to bring buckets and buckets over, you can just keep taking out of the one you've just created and adding to the next. And last one. Excellent stuff. Right. So now that the water's there we can plant our sugarcane here. That's gonna go along that row there. Um I think we want we need lighting in here for for the sugarcane to grow, I believe. And we don't want anything spawning here anyway, so we could do with some lighting. Hence the glowstone. We're gonna just leave it as glowstone, we're not gonna convert it into lamps or we're not going to use pumpkins either because that is a bit of a waste of material. Let's see if we can find our middle ground. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You see, I'm trying to count, but there's a slight lag when I'm walking so it sort of blurs the boundary between blocks so I can't quite see three six hang on three six nine yeah that's that's the middle one so the reason we're doing an odd number of uh, whatever it's called blocks is because the s redstone conduit is going to go here uh, and that's going to pack power, it's going to go vertically up and power all the units on both sides of this so it's going to power that wall and this wall so it's sort of very minimal redstone and that's going to go up and power all the pistons the reason it's in the middle here, dead centre is so it powers each side evenly and at the same time also reason for using sticky pistons is I've tested this out if you use regular pistons on the construction of this uh, when they fire, they glitch out apparent or oh, not loads, but they do glitch out, and it can cause a not a, a bit of a graphical glitch, really. Now, how do we want to do this? Also, not all the um, sugar cane gets pushed off if you use regular pistons, but if you have a solid block here pushed by a sticky piston, it ensures that all the sugar cane gets shift it off into the gap where you want it to fall down. Now I'm just trying to work out spacing wise if we put space there, two, another one there, and it ends up with one on the very end. But if we put it there, it lands one in the middle. That'll do. Okay, so we're gonna go like this. No, we're not going to go like that. Stop messing around. That's actually quite a lot of redstone, glowstone being used actually. That's eight, no, nine or ten glowstone per row. 
so that's 40 per bank that's almost a stack per each individual unit so I think we're going to minimize that actually we're going to spread it out a bit so we're going to remove that one hopefully we got all four back yes we did make it a three gap and that should work one two three one goes dead center of this entire unit then one two three another one three another one the end and then that so I'm sort of working from memory and from um, my imagination here I'm sort of not working to a plan but I'm working to a design so I know how it needs to go but I don't know what I want to put where or the other way around maybe Let's see if we that's the sugar cane the pushing block needs to go there which we need means we need the piston to go on these blocks but we don't actually need to put any blocks on that row because that's just sort of a waste so we'll put one or two down just so we can get this thing going and it goes like that all the way along so it's 18 no 19 pistons two two stacked high still stacked too high rather uh, so as you can imagine that's quite a lot of pistons in a very small space so we're going to be using a lot of our redstone supplies in this and actually a lot of iron frankly it's, oops because for every for every stack of pistons it's a stack of iron as well and uh sort of notice that our iron supply is going down a bit so we need to open up our uh, mine at some point uh, on the extreme hills biome and get that sort of producing okay that's good that's what we want so we don't want any glowstone on these blocks here because they count as glass blocks I believe and they have some weird inability to push sugarcane off properly the sort of faces through it so that's what we want, we need some solid blocks on those and I'm thinking yeah yeah I want to do I suppose I'm not going to really see it because it's it's going to be all sort of stacked high so if we just do regular stone like this it should sort of work with the aesthetic we're running with here Hopefully I also didn't damage any of the I didn't hopefully I didn't block up any of the water source blocks below this row when I was placing that row of uh cover blocks. Right. So that's sufficient lighting for the glowstone for the uh, sugar cane rather and it'll grow too high and then it'll be pushed off at a push of a button. Those two rows will shunt out. The bottom row will remain growing I hope then they should retract and allow the rest of the sugarcane to grow again so we're going to quickly grab some glowstone glowstone sugarcane give my words a bit mixed up to get today again why is that a surprise see Entenmen just stealing our sand blocks can we take him we can take him if he doesn't wimp out <coughs> Look at that strength, that sword is absolutely beast. I think knockback works quite well against Endermen because if you hit them or something, um, sometimes they have a tendency to teleport away and then they keep teleporting the moment before you do any damage to them. I think knockback or the ability of, of knockback sort of prevents that, so once you've got them in, in in a close area there's no chance for him I did just yeah I just thought I just uprooted the entire field there so if we plant all this along here we'll be able to watch and see if it grows 
as we want it to. It certainly should do. Right, so that's one unit done. And then we can stack them we can stack another unit on top of that immediately. So there's almost no I think the only thing said really, apart from the empty space between uh you know the back to back bits where the redstone compartments are. Aside from that, there's almost no wasted space here at all. So it's very space efficient. So that goes on there. Also another good thing is we can stack the water on top of these and it should shouldn't rather uh leak out at all when the piston arms are extended. I believe the piston arms are capable of sort of holding it in. Right, let's quickly check what the pattern was down here. So it goes too high and then it goes across as well, doesn't it? More of these. Uh, nope, not that one. There, there. Like that. And once again, more water. Also, another advantage is because there's multiple blocks underneath this water, it shouldn't cause that annoying dripping effect. Which is, uh, of course, good because that's never really, that's a bit, always been a bit annoying when you you make a giant machine and then you you set it up and you realize the entire thing is sort of dripping and you have to put up with the constant I don't think it actually creates a sound effect but it's sort of a visual, visually it's annoying to constantly having the roof leaking so that should be okay oh dear I've forgotten again what the pattern was Uh, I can't get into that. I in. Let me in. Okay. One glowstone. And then three, and then glowstone. More glowstone. That's the middle. Great. And also we can get this set up along here as well. A couple we missed. Oh actually I hadn't noticed that. If you um let's just check if there's any more I missed. I think that's all of them, apparently. I guess if you... Huh! That's interesting. You can use them as a sort of scaffold. You could... Obviously they don't count as solid blocks because... So you can't jump on them. But in theory you could stack them high like that. Once you're done just knock out the bottom one and the rest should all come tumbling down. Right, uh, not sure how long it takes for sugarcane to grow. Let's have a quick look at what we've got going on. See, that stuff hasn't grown either, so I guess it's much longer. We need to wait. Now, though, we can get on with doing the wiring for this thing. And let's get our, our dwindling reserves of glowstone, redstone out. See that used 40 odd pistons. Yeah. 38. Just trying to think what else we need. We need repeaters. And we're going to need more than that. And we're going to need a couple of torches for the, uh, the power conduit. We can stack that up. So move those to one side. Right, and quite simple technique for doing the 
glowstone. Is that the centre? That's going to go there so it equals it out. Yes. Uh, I do hope this is right. I think it is. Two wide platform of any block you choose. And then I'm just going to run repeaters and a line of redstone over the top of this. Uh, obviously because a repeater here will power the block directly in front of it and also power the block below it which is how we get all both roads to fire on a single run of redstone. Uh, one of the ideas I had to condense this idea, this design, was to run uh, redstone torches I think here was it here? You know what, actually that could work. If I had a redstone torch here. I'll have to test it before I start building this side here, but I think what we could do, for the moment we'll stick with this design, because uh, it's not too hard to modify redstone, obviously it's quite quick to just tap it out and start again. Bam. Also, this being 19 long, with the power source effectively being in the middle, it's an equal amount on equal length of wire on both sides. Also, the length redstone can travel is 15 blocks, I believe. So that's going to go like that. And that's the sound of both banks firing at once, all simultaneously. Ah, brilliant stuff. Excellent, and we can drop down here. What the? Whoa, 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 whoa. No, that's not on. You are not allowed in my cave. Get out. Where the? Where did he come from? Seriously, if he came all the way from down there, that is unbelievable. Maybe he came from here. No, because he'd be possibly too close to spawn. That is one crazy path he took just to come and kill me. This is, um... If you go back to one of the f some of the first episodes, this is the room where there was that giant pillow of lava coming down from the ceiling. And round down there is where our mine was. Just for a... Uh, Seriously? Seriously? Ah, oh dear. Yeah, I'm still having trouble navigating this place. <laughs> it's falling off all the time. Okay, so that's that powered. And if we have it like that, it unpowers it. So we can quickly go around this side and check if it's, everything's working. So everything's retracted as it should be, no obstructions. And if we quickly knock that one out, we can of course see the effects. That's pushed out, so all the sugarcane which would grow above that would get pushed outwards. And the water is holding as it should do, with no dripping effects. Excellent. Now, this is a question I've had for a while, but is sugarcane's growth affected by direct light above it? You know, do I need light sources? Do I need to have like a hole in the ceiling with glass over it for natural light to come down on top of it? Because that stuff's always taken ages to grow. And, oh, Pigman. Nope, not today, thank you. We don't do door to door sales. Oh, cool, level 31. Um, where was I? What was I saying? Train of thought has once again gone. Um, yes, does Sugarcane need a block of light above it to grow? If it does, obviously I can modify the ceiling here to accommodate a, a 
beam of a, you know a roof light so that the light can come down next to the sugar cane but it's going to be you know it's not going to be possible to be able to get it to go over it even if I change those to glass blocks which wouldn't work you've got the dirt block there which would impede any further light starts to grow over there perhaps it just needs time I've no idea how fast sugarcane grows on a regular basis anyway let's close that off come on get out of the water jump there we go alright let's do the next row up top now yeah I, I quite like that design sort of works quite well we could actually since I've got the silk touch pickaxe I should get some grass in on that it would look quite nice wouldn't it a bit of green although we're in the desert and so grass doesn't really go green it sort of goes vomit colour I don't know perhaps I'll do a, do a few tests later on all about testing right time to get this next layer done nope ladders go up not sideways get up um what was it we need oh yes temporary block hey that's not what I meant to do at all okay it's growing all oh, right hmm another thought I've just had is does it need a block of airspace above the sugarcane for it to be able to grow quicker um, obviously there's a block of airspace above all the ones down there because they haven't grown at all yet but yeah, actually I don't know that's another question I need to take to the internet with does sugarcane need well yeah I just need to find I can find out what the actual exact requirements of um, <laughs> growing sugarcane are sort of doing a uh, half assed job at the moment here just sort of building an entire factory based on guesstimation okay that, that. although this is quite an easy design to duplicate so if you would like to of course you can build this in your own world um, the only really determining factor is how many slime balls can you get because the more slime balls you can get the more pistons you can make and therefore the more efficient you can make your entire farm just by stuffing dozens of these machines into a small space uh, might also need to clear a large cabin though I'm certainly going to have to do that, we're going to clear all of that rock out, I think we're going to do some TNT in there as well just to speed things up a bit and that's always fun so I'm going to get on with this and be back in a bit alright so I've built a bit more of it and I've got some of the uh, essentials worked out uh, let's get this out of the way though so we can actually see what we're looking at like that so that's the machine so far it's uh, two banks at the moment that top row is not done so we've got two working banks back to back in what I can work out as the most confined space possible I uh, managed to condense it down by two blocks by sharing the same wire the redstone wire is shared between both sides and alternated on or off power by a central uh, column of redstone torches which alternate power fortunately because this is a four spaced you know each unit is four high uh, that's obviously even number it follows the on off switch which is also an even number so we don't need to do any alterations with you know height like we did on the mob tower lighting so that's 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 a good advantage there and I've worked out also that 
according to the wiki uh, sugarcane basically the only requirement is that it needs a block above it light and water next to the ground block which is obviously what we got all of those included uh, so and it has been working I have got about maybe a stack of sugarcane so far from it which I've been putting back into it on the new rows which I've been building progressively at the moment that's about a stack two two and a half stacks of pistons just yeah just shy of two and a half stacks of pistons so it's not cheap on materials so it's a lot of iron a lot of redstone as well with repeaters just about about half as many repeaters and then more redstone but I think I could definitely get this working it's probably going to go to this is a uh, a shadow of that side mirrored across and based on the height of this uh, roof we can get another one unit in there at the top so we can make that four units high 19 deep and that's the size of a double unit so we just imagine perhaps one perhaps two maybe uh, just so we don't get the sugarcane being knocked onto another shelf because one of the uh, one of the things I noticed when I fired it a couple of minutes ago is the sugarcane got launched from that onto this little ledge here so I think perhaps we need two gap in between each of the units which will have water flows at the bottom taking away the fallen sugarcane so that's two four six eight nine wide per unit so plus a block on each side so it's eleven blocks wide for each unit stack all of those next to each other all the way down to the end there and all on this side we should have dozens of these things and they'll be firing well I'll be in here for with the bread maker and while I'm operate, operating that obviously this will be growing at the same time so I can come out of the bread maker hit the button and collect the huge amounts of sugarcane and we can use that for villager trading emeralds and then obviously anything we need from that so I'm going to get on with this it's uh, still a lot of work to do I'm probably going to be hollowing out this bit next and might have to move these chests somewhere although I might actually just start on this side and move those to there because that's probably an easier task since we have all this open space already so I'm going to get on with that uh, I think I'm going to end the episode here though we've been going for a while now it may not be the um, most exciting episode but it's, it's building that's pretty much what Minecraft is so I'm going to cut the episode here but thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time bye bye